Hello everyone and welcome back to day 10 of Bitwise where we create a complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, where we left off on Friday, um, we had just uh, completed type checking for, uh, for statements and function bodies. And I believe that um, I did make a few fixes based on, on bugs people found sort of sh shortly after, um, but uh, most of it was, let's see here. Um, most of it was, well, I mean, the stuff that was not intended to be broken seemed to just work. Like there's still some stuff that was not handled properly. Like um, you can declare variables of size of type void and stuff, which uh, will be handled soon. But like the, the, the stuff that was sort of expected to work actually worked, uh, it seems. And so uh, I was going to work on C code generation over the weekend, uh, but ended up getting so caught up in personal stuff that all of that had to be put aside. And really all I had time for was thinking through code generation. Um, so the good news is that it means that we'll be starting code generation today on stream. I don't have any prepared code, um, but I did work through some of the, uh, so some stuff off stream just on, on paper basically uh, to make sure that I knew how, how I wanted to handle it. Um, and so, um, that's that's what I wanted to go over first very briefly, and then we will just start coding and go from there. So, um, so so where we basically are now in terms of the um, the the rest of the pipeline is that you know we have uh, we have text and we get tokens and then we get an AST and we get um, what do we call it? I guess we don't really have a data structure that encapsulates all of the um, you know all of the uh, the results of the resolution pass, but basically we have like you know resolve types and ordered decals. So the types get resolved as a side effect of doing all the type checking, and the ordering of the declarations also actually happens as a side effect because we have this dependency directed recursion where you know anytime we try to uh, resolve a declaration, we end up recursively resolving its dependencies. Uh, before we resolve the declaration itself, and that ends up introducing an ordering of them, and that's also where we do type uh, cycle detection and stuff like that. So basically, where we are in the pipeline, we now have a bunch of resolve types associated to declarations and stuff like that, and we have an ordered set or an ordered list of declarations. And so for code generation, um, you know, at a very basic level, um, we will do something like this. Um, you know, for declare, and and, and this is this will improve, this will become become less, I guess, uh, less brute force eventually. But for now, for declare all structs, unions, and functions um, uh, as incomplete types in the parlance, and um, then uh, generate code for each uh, decal in resolution order. Um, and, and so that's sort of the, the high level uh, scheme. So we before declare everything because um, for, you know, anytime you're, you're pointing to a type where you don't need to know the complete type, you just need to know that, you know, it has a certain name and we all agree on, on what that thing is, but it, we don't know the size of it or any of its field and stuff. We, uh, we only need a for declaration for that. Uh, and then for everything else, uh, we, we do potentially need to know the exact order and so on for constants and for, um, um, for, for struct, you know, for, for these incomplete uh, in incomplete types, like structure unions, we actually need to fully define them in case some subsequent code needs to use their size or, you know, refer to their fields and so on. And so that's kind of the high level, um, the, the the high level algorithm. Um, and then as you dive into that, of course, there's a bunch of different declarations. Um, and, and, and if you consider um, what code needs to be generated, what C code needs to be generated for them, you, you quickly discover that the the most complicated single piece is definitely dealing with the C declaration syntax. So you know this is this is kind of notorious. Um, uh, you know that that this is not just for beginners actually, but even for long you know long time C programmers like you know I've been programming in C for a long time, and I. I would say until this weekend, and maybe not for long after this weekend, I would say that I was not 100% um, on top of every every last, you know, like I did. I wouldn't say I had a complete understanding of it. The way most people learn C syntax is they learn some idioms, you know, so they learn that this declares X to be an int, and this is an array of ints, and this is an array of pointers to ints, 
and so on. But a lot of people probably, you know, would would maybe be confused even by something like this, maybe. And if you wrote something like this, they would be like, uh, are you sure that's C? That doesn't look like C at all. Um, and then when you get to function pointers, if you do something like this, then people usually get off the train entirely because insofar as they've memorized some kind of pattern, it's maybe something like this, but now you start putting stuff like this bracket next to it and people are like, whoa, I'm getting off the train. That doesn't look, you know, I'm gonna start using type defs, right? So people's normal, response to dealing with some of this uh, as soon as you get out of a few basic idioms like some of this stuff and and maybe um you know maybe something like this as soon as you start getting much beyond this people quickly retreat to using type defs which in practice and given that other people have the read to code even if you have a perfect intuitive understanding of c syntax for this uh, it's the social it's the kind neighborly thing to do to use type defs even if you have no problem with it um, but anyway, we are in a slightly different situation because in theory, we could introduce type defs for every intermediate level of a type. You know, So if you have a pointer to an array to a pointer to whatever, like some crazy nested thing, we could just introduce you know, kind of uh, dummy type defs for every single level so that um, we would never have to really deal with um, the general case as a single declaration. Um, but that seems... Um, you know that, that that seems unnecessary given that you're generating it by a program um it would be nice if we could just generate things directly rather than relying on that kind of crutch even if for human programmers it's often the right thing to do and so um i thought i would go through some examples and sort of through that show the general al algorithm we're going to be using to generate our um our c tech or c declarations basically so you recall that um go to the top of this file right now we have this uh, type struct which defines uh, a type um, and we have you know there's some primitive types like the built-in types for now we don't have everything that's in C but we have void char int float those are the the primitive types and then we have um, these kind of type constructors that are used to construct new types out of other types notably pointer array struct union enum func um, and so, you know, anytime we're doing um, doing anything with on a type, we're doing some sort of case dispatch based on this kind field and doing something like that. And so we somehow have to handle those cases. Um, we have to translate those corresponding cases to C. Um, and kind of mimicking the S expression syntax um, we, we used when we were doing the AST printer, you can write some of these cases as follows. So, um, you know, we can write void char int float just for the primitive types. And if you want to have a pointer to an int, you would write it like this. Uh, if you want to have a pointer to a pointer to a void, it would be something like this. So this would be equivalent of this, and this would be equivalent of this. Um, if you want to have an array of 10 ints, you would do it like this. Uh, if you want to have an array of 10 pointers to ints, you would do it like this. And this would be, uh, well, this would be like this. Um, but now if you have this case here, um, where we flip the, the order of those type constructors, you would actually end up with this, um, which was this thing I wrote up here. Um, and actually you can completely re remove, I guess this would be, like if you're writing this as a typecast, it would be something like this, um, where it starts looking even more scary and mysterious. I think that's right. Let me see if uh, the compiler accepts that. <clears throat> so yeah, if I have something like this, well, it's possible it won't, well, let me try something here. Um, it's possible it won't let me do this for other reasons. Like if I do this, yeah, you can't cast to array types, but other than that, the syntax is actually valid as, as weird as it looks. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons you don't often see this is a pointer to an array of something. Um, in C, you, you just have array to pointer to K, right? And so it's not particularly useful. But, I mean, it is, it's a valid type schema. It's a, something you can write and it's syntactically valid and, and so on. So, so that's, you know, that's kind of the S expression syntax um, that I'll be using when talking about our types. So this is really just a, 
you know, a syntax for what we already have in our program uh, in this type struct. And so le le let me walk through how the translation is going to work. Uh, the most obvious, of course, is that these are just going to, I'm just going to write it out even though it's really obvious, but these are basically going to, um, to translate something like this. And I'll be using X as a placeholder for whatever, you know, if you're declaring a variable or you're doing a type def in C, I'm going to use X as just my placeholder name identifier uh, for the thing I'm declaring. So, uh, well, we know we can't declare a variable of, of type void, but you know, it's still, um, it's, we, you could still generate the declaration. It would just be illegal, but you know, I'm just gonna leave out these semicolons, but that's sort of the idea for this. Um, and now, um, let's talk about let, let's let's talk about the the infamous the declaration follows use principle in C, um, which you know is what motivates C's declaration syntax. The idea is the original idea is that when you're declaring something like an array of ten ints, the declaration should look like an expression that does the corresponding kind of array indexing or dereferencing. So in this case. You know, x square bracket 10 is like, okay, if x was an array of 10 things and you're, this is, you know, you would do something like this to index it, right? So it would look corresponding here. And here it's saying, you know, if I, if, if, if x was the thing that I wanted to declare, then first I would index it and then I would dereference it. So you can see this kind of mirrors, this is the expression syntax over here. And on the left, of course, we have the declaration syntax. And for this case, this one is a little bit uh, weird because most of the time when, if, if f is a function pointer, so here it's a function pointer to a function uh, that takes an integer argument and returns an integer result. Um, typically in C, if you have, if this was a callback or something like that, you would just call it like this, right? Even though f is actually a pointer to a function, you would call it like this. But really, uh, in order to sort of make sense of the declaration follows use principle, and you you have to pretend that the way you would do this function call is as follows. You first, you know, this is a function pointer, so it's a pointer to a function. So f is a pointer to a function. You first dereference it, which strips away the pointer part. We now have a function, and we can then uh, call the function with an integer argument and get back an integer result. Um, but of course, you're allowed to write it like this. Um, and everyone writes it like this. But if you want to sort of see the parallelism between the use and the declaration, you would really write it like this. And by the way, that's totally, again, it's legal C to do so. Um, if you have, you know, if, if we have something like this here, um, you, you can obviously, you can write this, um, but you, you're also allowed to do this. Oops. Um, and the nice thing about this, even though you know most people are not going to write it in their C code, is hopefully it makes evident how the declaration follows use principle actually plays out here. Um, when I brought this up on Twitter this weekend, someone who who knows the standard very well point, pointed out that um, let's see here um, call expression. Let me see if I can find it. I'm not going to go digging too deeply, but um, oh maybe here. Um, function calls. Someone pointed out that actually, um, according to the standard, the thing you're calling is actually not the function, it's the pointer to the function. Um, so even though I, I think that in some sense, the declaration syntax for function pointers makes it, I think suggests that in some sense, the original intent was that the thing you're calling is a function, not a function pointer. Otherwise, this syntax doesn't really parallel the use. Um, but I mean, I, I should mention that for, for people who, who care about this, that the standard actually says that the thing you're calling is not the function, but the pointer to the function, which makes sense from a machine perspective. But just given C's notion of a function versus a pointer to a function, it's a little bit wonky. But, but the reason you're allowed to write this, by the way, is because of something very weird. So, okay, this works. What about this? This also works. That might look a little bit mysterious. In fact, you're allowed, you can put a whole bunch of these if, if it makes you feel happy. Because what happens in each of these cases is you, you start with a function pointer and then you dereference it and now you have a, um, now you have a function, a non-pointer function. But then when you dereference it, it sort of automatically takes it at its address, right? I'm, I'm sure 
it's, it's people know that if you, um, so let's say we declare f to take void and return void. Um, if you write this, um, that works, even though main test is actually not a function, pointer is a function. Technically, you're kind of supposed to write this, um, but it allows you to sort of automatically take the address. And, and that's the same thing that lets you, in this case here, you know, put as many put put as many dereferences as you want because every time you dereference it when you take it when you dereference it again it then takes the at so it's almost as if you're just kind of you know kind of interleaving these anyway um, but just some quirks of C's C's uh, syntax in this area that are that are worth knowing for true nerds I suppose but anyway I do think that the proper way to understand the logic behind declaration follows use in the context of function pointers is to imagine that what you're actually, what you in some sense should be writing uh, for, for calling through a function pointer is to first dereference it and then call the resulting function anyway. Um, so that was just an aside on the declaration follows use principle. Now let's see how to apply that to a fairly arbitrary thing. So suppose, um, suppose I wanted to have something like, um, let me let me write sort of a schematic way that we can build up arbitrary C type declarations from our S expression syntax. Suppose you want to have a pointer to int. First we start with X. Um, let's see here. Let me make sure I don't confuse myself. Yeah, first you start with X, uh, which is just for now a placeholder. And I'm going to write star X because we're going to sort of from the outside descend into this S expression term. So we start with the pointer part and so we write a prefix, you know, star for that. And now we're into the int part, and then so we write uh, the int. And so we start with x, which is just our placeholder symbol. Then we peel off the pointer part, we add that here, and then we get into the the bottom, you know, like the base part, which is the int, which goes in front. And now we're done. Um, if we want to then do pointer to pointer to int, we're going to start with x. We're going to peel peel off the outer pointer. Uh, and then we're going to peel off the outer pointer again for, for the second occurrence. Oops. And I'm going to write it like this now. I'm going to be explicit for now about the, the nesting by using explicit parentheses. Um, and then finally, we're down to the uh, the int part. And so, so, so do you see how we start with the placeholder symbol, and then we repeatedly peel off the, the next innermost part. So pointer, and then the next pointer, and then finally the base type int. Um, and incidentally, one thing I want to make clear, and which is going to help us get started, um, since we're generating this by machine, um, is that this, of course, is the same as this. Like, if you imagine you're, you're you imagine you're thinking about this through the declaration follows use principle. If X is a pointer to a pointer, you're allowed to write it like this, but you can also just write it like this if this was an expression, right? So this is really the the, the the fact that this parenthesization is allowed in an expression context means that under the declaration follows use principle, it's actually also allowed in a declaration. And again, let me just, if you think I'm lying, you're allowed, you can actually write this. Okay. Um, and if I, you know, and if I do something like this, it goes through, like, just so you can see that I don't have to do conversion. So these are the same type, just with a different syntax. Um, and a more extreme version of this is that, you know, if I if I have, uh, if x is an int, I can actually do this, which again, you're unlikely to have seen before, because this is a good way of confusing people. This is an example of how, because peop the way pe most people, I mean, I I'm, I'm really extrapolating from my own personal experience, but the way most people learn C's syntax for this stuff is that they learn this, the basic patterns like, you know, the base types, uh, pointers to things, arrays of things. They learn a few basic cases, but then they never really learn the general case. And so they probably don't realize that parentheses for grouping to control the precedence and associativity is totally allowed and don't carry any meaning beyond just controlling the way the parsing proceeds. So anyway, um, but, we're, but, but when we're writing out in this schema, we're going to use explicit parentheses um, so that at least in our first pass on our code generator, we're not going to have to think about 
the exact precedence and associativity of the different operators. So all right, so that was that case. Now let's let's show how this one works. So we start with x, a placeholder as before, and then we write x subscript 10, uh, peeling off this outer array part, part. And then we next get to the pointer part, which looks like this. And then finally, we finish off with uh, the prefix int for the base type. Um, and again, this would normally be written like this without the parentheses, but it's the same thing. And just to convince you, I'll stop convincing you with all these examples, but uh, the first time I saw this, it felt like a magic trick, like because I'd never seen people use redundant parentheses before. So uh, just to hammer it home, this is, well, I guess I, let's see, I don't think the array assignment is going to work, but at least it, it will complain about something else, not about the syntax being wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not, this is going to complain for other reasons. Well, let's see here. I mean, it won't let me assign the arrays, but just to show you that, that at least the issue is not that the... Yeah, so it, it won't let me do that. But anyway, these are the these are two equivalent ways of declaring the same type. Um, and this extends even to function pointers. So um, let's say, well, let's start with basic function pointers. So I'm going to use this syntax here to correspond to what in C would be written as um, as this. And um, so let's, or sorry, not, not like this, sorry, like this. Now I'm, I'm confusing myself because the basic function stuff in C at least um, is, you know, it, it doesn't include a pointer implicitly. You have to add that. So if you wanted to, to translate this, you would do, let's see, you start with X, you add uh, the pointer part, and then you have to add the other part. And again, we're parenthesizing, and this is a case where the parenthesization is absolutely not optional, and that's why this is the conventional syntax. If you remove the parentheses here, it means something totally different. It actually means a function returning an int pointer rather than a pointer to a function returning int. Um, all right. Now, in our language, what is called func, the equivalent of func is actually a, always a function pointer type. So we won't have to deal with those two separate cases, but uh, I just wanted to make make that clear. That's where this t type, this is where the t, the c type uh, declaration stuff comes from, is that this is how you declare a function. Um, but if it's a pointer to a function, then you start with x, you add the star for the pointer part, and then you wrap the function declaration stuff around it. So, uh, all right. Um, so already, I think from this scheme, you can probably see how the algorithm goes, right? Um, you do, you start with your your thing. So if, if you have something like this, um, you, you know, say you want to declare something called X of that type. You start with X, um, you peel off the outer layer, and that's sort of the return value. And this temporary, this partial string here uh, is the, is the partial result. And then as you recur on the dot, dot, dot part, whatever the other stuff is that basically wraps its stuff around it. So our basic algorithm is basically going to be using temporary string buffers to build up kind of inside out in this fashion, the C type, de the C declaration, uh, and just kind of continuing until we're done with everything and we get to the, the base type. So, um, uh, that was not, hope, hopefully you picked up some stuff there, um, but if not, it should become clear once we actually implement it. Um, but I, I wanted to talk through this before starting the code, um, just so you can see where some of these patterns are coming from. All right. Um, maybe before jumping into the code, I should check if there's any questions or any obvious mistakes I made here. All righty. Um, Boom, boom, boom. All right, so it sounds like everyone either understood this already, maybe better than I did, um, and I can just jump in. So yeah, I think actually, um, let me just create a new file here. I think we're gonna start with the type declaration stuff because I, I think that's a good sort of uh, bottom up place to start. It's pretty self-contained and um,
Um, and it will let, let us get started on something interesting, and then we'll move out from there. All right. Um, Let's make sure that file gets included. Oh, did that get created in the wrong place? All right. So I think basically what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, we're going to create some function that returns uh, a string buffer and we're not gonna, we're going to be eventually using temporary storage. So we're not going to do fine-grained memory management. We're just going to allocate stuff in demand and assume it gets cleaned up once we're all done. Um, and so it's basically going to be something like type two um, C decal or something like that. Um, yeah, all right, let's just try that. And so I think, um, There's going to be, I guess, an existing string we pass in. Let me see how that's going to work. Because we take an existing buffer and we have to wrap our stuff around it, I think is how it's going to go. So the example we were looking at before, um, we start with something like x. So this could be provided from the top level invocation, like the variable name or whatever. Or maybe it's empty if you're doing a typecast. Uh, like this case, for example, if you're using this in a type task context, you would write it like this. Um, and then we wrap stuff around it, you know, before or after it, depending on whether it's a pointer or a, a function or a ray thing. Um, so that's probably what we want to do is we want to pass in the existing piece. Uh, and maybe we're just going to, yeah, let's just say that's it. Um, and then depending on... You know, let's just get the basics out of like get the basic cases out of the way. Um, so I think I want to have a function that's basically like an allocating printf variadic function, so that I, so that I can do something like um, like this. Um, I'm just going to write out the use cases for now, and then we'll write that function in a sec. Vote. Um, so that probably needs to go back here in our common junk. What is it? And so we did something similar, I mean, not quite, but like we did we did a similar kind of thing using VS, VSN printf for our stretchy buffer uh, append printf. So it's not going to be quite like that because we're allocate. Well, we're always going to allocate a new string, and for now we're just going to use xmalloc. But it's going to be the fast, you know, temporary stack allocator once we uh, we put that in. So always remember one plus. We have to account for the um, the zero termination. Vsn printf. Um, oh, and for the first pass, we just figure out the length. Um, zero null, and then args, I believe that's it. And then we allocate that buffer. And I always forget this, but you're only allowed to use the args once. So you have to actually some, and, and, I mean, small side note, but on MSVC, the way they handle var args uh, is 
I think different from both Clang and GCC. And so if you're uh, someone who habitually only compiles your code with uh, MSVC, this is almost always going to be an issue. There, there, there's going to be weird stuff that passes on MSVC that doesn't work on any other compiler. Um, and this was one of those things where I checked this in first uh, reusing. Like for, for the for the second VS printf, I would use the same args, uh, which is not allowed uh, either in a legally fa like in a lawyerly flat fashion, but also practically on those compilers. So it's not just a standard snippick. Um, all right. So then we do the real thing here, and we should now have proper buffer size. What's it saying? I guess I'm providing, oh, it's the wrong order, of course. All right, so let's just test that. Um, let me just write some stuff in here. Um, well, so let's do some weird stuff like um, Um, something like this. Um, let's see what that is. Is that not getting deleted? Okay. I mean, that looks right. Um, so it should be surrounded by two copies on the left and two copies on the right. Looks reasonable to me. Um, Do something simpler here. And then um, this would be one, two, one, two. And this would be an ASDF in the middle. Okay. Oh, right now, one more here. Okay. So let's move over to Jen. And um, for the pointer case, which is, I guess, a little bit more interesting, um, I'm going to, well, let's try this first. We could either do it from the inside or the outside, I guess, but let me do it this way. Um, so we, we're going to do something like this. Um, I guess this is actually like L U um, type array size. Oh, this is not right. So let me think here.
type two decal um, type pointer element, something like this. Um, type two decal. Let's see. What was the error? Undefined. Oh, C decal. Um, let's try some basics. Okay, that looks right. I'm not going to bother right now verifying the other base cases because those should just work. But I guess more interesting would be if I make a pointer to an int, what does that look like? And again, that looks very over parenthesized to a normal C programmer, but I think that should be right actually. So for example, if I have this, or it's called Y, and I then do this, this this compile does. Um, Spelling is really award-winning today. That looks extra, extra over parenthesized. But I guess, no, I guess it's the same level of, of extra parenthesization as the other one. Um, we think, do we ever need this? Yeah, I mean, let's just leave it for now. Um, let's do funks. So for functions, I guess they're a little more interesting since there's a variable amount of stuff. Um, so let's see. We have to do the, de the do the deed to each of the arguments. Um, actually, let me just check something for my own benefit before I do that. Um, so if you have something like this, and then you have a, I mean, obviously this is legal. Yeah. If I want to not name it, I should be able to do this, right? No problem. Okay. Um, let's just call them params. I think it's empty. Um, what are these? Okay, so types and then there's return type. Um, I'm just going to do it this way to be lazy. So for each of them, we want to do the treatment. Um, actually, let's do it like this.
no, so, so we have one called param. And that's going to be, I guess we're just going to use an empty string because we don't want to give it a name. And then, um, I guess for this, we can use a stretchy buff. So maybe that's the easier way to do that. Um, so we start with the return type in that case. Uh, start with the return type. Um, I'm going to use this as a way to append to it to make sure we get null termination and all that stuff. So let's see here. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, and I guess that's the part that needs this. But actually, our funks are always pointers to things. And so I guess I need to always do this. Let's see here. Something like that. And then for each of these, um, I should really just have a buff append that does non-termination, but let's just do it like this for now. Um, Um, Well, I guess we can do it that way. So we have, need the, the opening part and then the closing paren. All right, that has about zero chance of working the first try, but um, let's try something really simple. Um, so uh, type func uh, And step through that because well not that part that part um, not that part either so this is return type I think we know how to handle that so that should be fine okay That looks a little weird. Um, I mean, that, I don't think that will be legal C uh, because I have that extra parens in there. So maybe that's the problem. I think, yeah. So I was probably right to hesitate over this. I think because all these others add their own parens, we don't need to do it at the base case. Maybe. Let me just try that. Okay, that looks reasonable except for the extra space at the end. Where did that extra space come from? I guess it came from here. Um, I mean, 
I can leave that for now, I guess. It's not a big deal. Um, let's add two of these. Okay, I mean, so far so good. Um, I guess the in more interesting case is when you have an array of these. Um, and actually, let me let me go back to the case we wrote out by hand earlier. Let's just make a new one. looks vaguely right again as weird as it looks with all the extra parens we'll eventually get rid of extra parens by just you no know, anytime anytime you generate one of these guys you can look at the most recent thing you generated and look at the presidents of the new thing you're adding and you can see whether the you know the relative presence and associativity requires the uh the extra parentheses but for now this is just a uh, a simple way of doing it in a hopefully foolproof fashion. So let's see here. So if I have, uh, what is it saying? I think that should work, right? Oh, right, it's an array initialization. So we would have to do it like this. But other, but that is, as is expected, it should be an array of function pointers. Um, correct. All right, all right, all right. Um, what about? I guess we already use this for the parameters, but yeah, let's do this case here, but with uh, something like this. Yeah, these extra parens are a problem. I do not believe that's legal. So if we're doing a cast, for example, okay, yeah, you can't have empty parens around something like that. Um, at least I don't think so. Yeah, it interprets it as a function type. Okay, so we have to look at that a little bit more. Um, let's see here. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah, that actually looks right. So again, as weird as this probably looks, I do believe that's right. Yep. And in particular, if you had another, like declared in a less, um, less bizarre fashion, like if you had this thing here, we should just be able to assign them because they are actually the same type. Yep. Um, let's do something similar with arrays. So if we have something like this, oh, sorry. I don't know about those extra parens again. Let's try it. I think, yeah, you're not allowed to have those parens with the square brackets when the thing is empty there. 
Yeah, it should be this. Oops. Yep, that works. So the problem, I guess, is that when this thing is empty, so oh, so let me show you something interesting. Um, so remember the wrong declaration it was generating was this, and that's not allowed. But if there had been an X here, I think this would, been, would have been allowed. Yep, so this is kind of an annoying case where depending on whether we're passing uh, a name or not, we have to either, well, add or remove parentheses. So I don't think that's too bad. Um, one way we can handle that, I guess, is maybe we actually have null. Um, I mean, that introduces, excuse me, that introduces a special case. So maybe that's not the right. Um, It's kind of like we want to decide whether to have extra parentheses based on whether stir is empty or not. Um, I mean, that would be easy enough to just case analyze that, but is there an easier to factor that out? Yeah, let's just make it a function even if it's maybe not. Um, and what will we call it? Um, I mean, I don't know if these names are any good, but let's try this. Um, I mean, this is really something that doesn't deserve a function, but I just don't want to put that in the big expression. Um, let's call this. This will probably be rewritten, but just so then we're going to remove that here. Um, so let's see. So only only parenthesize if the string is non-empty. Only parenthesize if the string is non-empty. Um, that sounds reasonable. Okay, that looks right at least. Uh, 
Um, alrighty. Actually, let me just ver verify the others didn't get too many parentheses removed. So we still get parentheses there and here and there. This one still looks right, as does that one. Um, someone's asking, can't you just pass in some dummy name to work around the missing name? Actually, you can't, because this also is going to be used for casts. So when you're doing a cast, you need to, you can't use the dummy name, right? Like if you want to do uh, something like, you want to cast as some weird function pointer type where the declaration would look like this, the cast would look like this, right? This would be like foo. So you need to handle the case where there's no name because that's what's required for cast uh, and compound literals as well. But yeah, it's a good question. But yeah, so you can't work around it. For, it's true that you could work around it for function parameters, but you would need to handle it for type depths anyway. Um, all right. Uh, someone's asking if ion does named function pointer parameters. Uh, right now, our function pointer types actually don't store parameter names, but that that's something just for version zero that's being skipped. Uh, longer term, um, the function pointers will contain the name parameters as part of the function pointer type, so that you can, you know, we can we can eventually do named function parameters where you can do you know, create window title ASDF with you know, whatever. But uh, right now we don't have that in the function pointer types, but it will eventually be added once version zero is up and working. So trying to stay minimalistic for now. Um, let's call this cbeckel parent. All this temp string stuff is going to obviously not involve the system allocator once we swap in the you know, the temporary stack allocator. Um, but anyway, I think that is reasonable. Um, what else may I have left out? Actually, let me, I don't like these extra spaces. So let me just do a dumb trick here. Um, sort of in the same vein as the other stuff, but in this case, it's purely cosmetic. I just don't like seeing those spaces. That's kind of something that gets my OCD to flare up. Yeah, so this, this is starting to look correct. How are we doing on time? All right, about an hour in, that's fine. I'll, like I said, I'll uh, I'll stop the stream in 30 minutes for the main stream, but I'll continue the extra stream to go as far as we can on the remainder. But this is really the only part that I anticipate being, I don't know, I mean, that's famous last words, but I think this is the only part that's actually non-trivial is getting this stuff right. So let's make sure we, we got it right until we, uh, before we proceed. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so no, you know, you're right that they work for function uh, parameters, uh, like to, to have a dummy name. But I'm just saying that the same exact code is going to be used for casts. And so um, we would need to solve it for casts. And it's going, it's going to use the same code for casts. So this is just a testing ground for that. Um, and also dummy names are kind of... Before we have uh, official names actually stored in the function pointer types, introducing dummy names makes me feel weird. But but since it's exercising the code, we need for ty for uh, casts anyway. So, yep. All right. Um, let's just look at this and see if anything stands out as being suspicious. Um, boom, 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 boom. I mean, this is a little too easy. It makes me feel uncomfortable. All right, let's just proceed then. Uh, we should have some more torture tests. Does anyone have an idea for a really good torture test? Um, the 
So Elavid, the the case I met the, when I when I mean cast, I mean do you see in your case there's the star, right? Like that's essentially the case you're solving, right? Like you're casting to a function pointer, but I mean that um, even without like for example this, I you know so this is a cast, right? Or this is part of a cast. And the way I was writing it before was this, which is not correct syntax. So let's see. You know, this on the left-hand side is, is legal, except for the fact that I'm not referencing it. Um, but if I do this on the right-hand side, uh, th this won't be legal. Well, and also it's going to say I can't initialize an array that way and stuff. I would have to write it like this, but that, that was kind of my point. Um, yeah. All right. Okie dokie. Okay, so who's suggesting a torture test case? Function that returns array of functions. Ooh, spicy. Let's let's do that. Um, let's see here. Function that returns array of. Okay, so let's 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 actually just say trivial parameter list, which we haven't tested, so that needs to be tested anyway. Actually, let me just test that first before we add to it. Okay, that looks right. Um, and then for the return type, function that it returns array of function pointers. Actually, let me just break this into a temp. Does this look right? This definitely looks very brain bending. So if this thing compiles, function returns function. This feels like a true statement but why is it complaining? Oh no, that looks off. Yeah, so that looks wrong. Let me see here. Well, let's okay. Let's see. It definitely feels like it's missing an extra paren somewhere, like this one. I forgot to add an extra set of parens. Or maybe no, but that should work because that's just left associativity. So even though I didn't add it and probably should have, um, Hmm. Oh, you can't return functions directly. Oh, you're right, of course. Returns function, but shouldn't I be returning a function pointer? Like because my code in my code func actually is supposed to designate a function pointer always. So I think in either case there's a bug. Um, so it optionally parenthesizes this. Mm.
Where's the return type? Let me. Okay, so this dereferences the first level. Uh, and then, no, no, I think the, the bug is as follows, because if, if it's a, a function returning something, first we should, let's see here, no arguments to get the first thing. Um, and then an array of something, so it should be like 10, And then int hmm. let me see here. Yeah, I think the there's mistake i think what i wrote out manually is more like how it should be so i think there's another issue here but because i so logically what let's see what, what do we have we have a function which returns an array of function pointers so we have a function we first have to call it to get it back so we start with x and then we dereference it and we call it so now we have the array of function pointers. And so now we add this to get the array part indexing. And now we do this. And then we have to finally call it again and like that. Okay, so I got the same thing twice in a row. So I think this is the right type. Um, let me think, why isn't it doing this? Excuse me, I have to cough. All right, I didn't die. That was a close call. So this is still not right. So after dereferencing this thing, I should be calling it first. Hmm. Change line 21, but th this is the return part. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, maybe that's the problem. <clears throat> no, that messed it up. Okay, now I'm confusing myself. Let me go back and think through it rather than just trying stuff. Um, so first of all, all these parens don't make sense because the int, for example, is ultimately going to wind up here. Um, let's see. 
so I can I, I think I can do it by hand. So what am I so what am I doing when I'm doing it by hand? I start with x, which is the innermost part. Then I dereference it. Then I call it. Then I um, What was it? <clears throat> I understand it's going to give me an error in terms of <laughs> term does not evaluate to a function taking. Yeah, that's a new one. All right. So wh what am I doing wrong here? Let me think. Um, I start with the return type. I think I need to wrap this stuff around everything. Um, Just work this through. <clears throat> no, this still doesn't look right. Well, this part looks right. So we didn't break the existing stuff, but this is still not. Okay, that does work. Okay. Um, someone's saying you could type def the pointer types to make it easier. Well, if we do that, it means we don't really understand the syntax. I mean, so I'm, I'm using this also as an excuse for me to clear it up. So I can write it out by hand. So let me see this. We start with something, we dereference it, then we call it, and then we dereference it again. So, uh, and then we call it again. Oh, I see. Oh, I see what Fabian was saying all the way from the beginning. So Fabian was right. I, I understand what his original thing that I was getting wrong was. But nevertheless, this was a real bug. So let's try the actual case. Um, the actual case is we want to have an array of, uh, let's say, function pointers um, returning int. Well, we want to have 10 of those. Then we want to have another function returning that. So real bug, but now I understand what he was saying. Oh, right. Need a, need a thing here. Oh no, still have it. Okay, this looks correct. This is what I think what I wrote by hand. Because for the case I mentioned, you start with X, you dereference it, um, and then you call it. And now you have an array of things, so you index it, and then you dereference that. And then you call it. Yeah. OK, so that is actually correct. OK, and that's the error we got before. 
Yay. All right. So this is the case where I could get it wrong. I could get it right doing it manually. Like, I mean, th th this is the thing. You could see how I can actually reason myself through this even before I could write the correct code by using this inside out. Like, you know, if it's a function pointer, first we have to do references and, and then we have to call it. And then if it's if it returns an array of things, we then have to index that array. And if each of those is a, uh, you know, if each of those is a function pointer, then we have to dereference that. And then we have to finally call it. Uh, and then say int. So you can kind of see, hopefully, how even though I had written the wrong code, I can actually pretty reliably write these complex things inside out. Now, parsing them is a totally different matter. I think this is actually a great example of how you know parsing versus generating uh, is pretty different. <laughs> like from a, I mean, you could write the, you could obviously write the the parser for this mechanically, but my point is just like a human trying to parse this is going to I mean, they're, you're, you're going to have to read it inside out in a weird way, and it's kind of a mess of symbols, but it's pretty easy to generate incrementally, even for a human. All right. Um, this is now, I'm going to say that even though this is probably not bulletproof, uh, I think this is convinced, well, we at least fixed one major issue, which is I was doing this at the wrong level, and now things look good. Oh, so Fabian's asking about the args to type func. This is the six, uh, you know, the, the first two arguments specify an array of parameters, and then the last one is the return. All right. Um, let's say that's pretty decent for now. Let me call this C decal test. Um, make sure that still passes. Alrighty. Yeah, I mean, like, even though I can't, a lot of these things are probably not legal things in C or whatever, but I mean, the algorithm should handle it, right? Because it, this, the, the syntax is the same, even if certain things are disallowed semantically. So. Uh, these are actually good cases to torture test with. All right. Um, did that handle all of the different cases, though, for types? No, we don't handle structs and unions. Structs and unions are just going to be referenced by name, so those are pretty easy, I think. So they're basically going to be the same deal. Um, so maybe I'll have a function called type name, which probably shouldn't be in this file, but whatever or cdecl name. Um, Do I actually have, I'm trying to remember, I don't know if I actually put the names. This is a little bit annoying because I think I want to decouple the C, the C, you know, the, the names in C from their names in the original program. And so I should have some sort of mapping um, for these guys. Um, and I'm not even sure my types right now have names in them, which they probably should. Oh, they have a sim, so I guess I can use that. Um, but we should do a proper mapping later. These are consts. And then we can put all these under one ceiling.
Okay, that was one too many. And also struct and union. Um, I'll verify. Well, let me let me verify that the old stuff still works. Yep. Um, and then we'll do the this when we do the declarations because we need a declaration to get the name. This should probably change. Probably we want to have the name as a feature of the type rather than just part of the associated symbol, but I think for now this is okay as placeholder. Um, all right, so we, let's do some kind of gen decal dealy. Um, so I think I'm going to use a string buffer this stuff. And I might reuse my unholy trick from my printer. Um, do I want to? Nah, let's just make a function. Um, let me just have a function called genf. So this is gen buff. This also suggests, well, I guess I can just use good old macros. Okay, so let's do basic stuff. I already know one thing we'll have to change about the resolver code because right now the resolver code does type inference, but it doesn't actually tag anything with the resolve type. So it uses it for type checking uh, to validate it, but it needs to have a way of passing it on to the generator. And I think I'm just going to annotate the existing AST nodes that are relevant. Uh, but uh, let's do stuff right now that's explicitly annotated, I guess, just to test it. No, actually, let's do that right now. I don't want to defer it. Um, so when you do resolve, let's see, what are the cases? It's kind of annoying they all do the return here because now I don't have an easy place to to do that. Um, uh, by the way, look at how awful this is. So I'm using the go to all feature. I think it's because it interprets dot as a regex dot. But like, given that it's also used for file opening, like I think if I do, yeah, look at this. Look at this garbage. Why would you have dot mean a regex dot in something like this? All right, calm down. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's just put it right here. I need to forward declare it. Kind of didn't want to do this originally, but yeah, I don't want to do it with the type dev here. All right. Um, Mm, 
it would be nice if I could just wrap this thing and call this something else. Because this is the entry point for everything, I think. Mine's still open. Um, okay, and let's then say if if result type, then expert type result type. Probably we should add some explicit fields to the declarations as well. Yeah, I mean, most of them do actually have associated types. All right, and then resolve decal. What do I call that? I guess I could also just cross link. I could also just cross link the decal to the symbol. I don't think that's a unique association though. Maybe a decal can appear in, mul in multiple sim symbols. Um, this is not really how I would want to do it in general, but it's okay for me for now. There's definitely some redundancy here I have to think about, but let's just get the data in for now. There's also complete type. Now, you know what? Let's put it, let's just associate it, the decal with the type. And if that has repercussions later, we'll deal with them. So um, all of this stuff, I may end up putting this into a pointer hash table rather than making them int intrinsic to the struct itself, to be honest. But uh, this is a convenient way of just uh, creating that association for now. And so I guess whatever, what is it, global sim decal, this thing should um, decal sim so we just cross link those okay um and then back to the generator what are we doing on time all right we're almost at the cutoff point and i'll just continue after um i'll, I'll answer any questions and then i'll you know stop recording and, and restart recording but i'll i'll continue on this so yeah let's uh let's see if there's any questions and we'll just take that micro break otherwise Um, oh, right. Yeah, someone pointed out, Elevid, that um, I'm doing the, the C++ habit that I've done cost bugs here already, which is that for empty parameter lists, I'm not generating void. Uh, I'm just uh, generating an empty list, so that's not correct. So let me just go and fix that. Uh, and, and yeah, get get your questions in while I fix that. So um, if type fuck numprams zero or let, let's okay. 
Okay. All right. It actually just, OBS decided, hey, I'll just disconnect for you, apparently. So let me just wait for that to get back. All right. Yeah, so. All right. Looks like OBS uh, reconnected. That was not intentional disconnect. All right, so I added, uh, I just added the, the handling for the empty parameter list. So it's now a void param list. And uh, I just, you can see on the right hand side here in the watch window, you can see that it now added those. So thanks for that, good catch. Oh, I didn't, I don't have breaks, breaks here. Where do I need breaks? You broke, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that's a really good point. That was a bad refactoring, which would presumably have been caught immediately, but uh, maybe not. So let's see here. Um, just do it the manual way. All right, um, let me see. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for catching that out of, I, I, I assume I would have caught it once I tested it immediately, but uh, definitely that was a good catch. All right, um, let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Um, I just want to get back into coding. So if there's no more questions, you can ask questions after as well, but it looks like there's no super present questions. So I'll just stop the recording and restart it. It'll just be a microsecond.